All week long, we've taken you back in time, diving into the history of Fort Worth's infamous Hell's Half Acre. For 50 years, all kinds of sins and vices thrived within that red light district. In our final series tonight, Ken Molestina explaining how the acre finally came to an end. There was no way Hell's Half Acre was going to go on forever, and after many attempts to do away with it failed over its five-decade span, it was an intervention involving the U.S. military that finally put an end to it. As the saying goes, all things must come to an end, even the good times for all those who treated Hell's Half Acre as an adult playground lacking morals and judgment alike. Through its lifespan, the acre had several iterations where attempts to shut it down were made. There's always been, I guess, the question of where do you draw the line and how do you draw the line. Local historian Brendan Smart says the look of Hell's Half Acre changed a few times, but the boozing, the gambling, and the prostitution were always there until its final demise. At the end of the day, what really cleaned up the acre uh, was World War I. The arrival of Camp Bowie to Fort Worth meant the acre would be ordered dismantled. The United States the Department of Defense made it their policy that no vice would be tolerated within a certain amount of distance of an army camp. Raids, mass arrests, evictions, and even some tearing down of structures became commonplace. By 1920, the area known as the Acre was declared to be morally clean. The things that had made the Acre exciting had kind of come to a natural close or moved elsewhere. While so much of that activity popped up in different parts of town, like Jacksboro Highway, for example, the reality was that the Acre, in its form, the way that it was infamously known, had finally seen its last days. By 1960, the few structures left from the time were finally bulldozed, making way for Fort Worth's modern downtown plans. In 1968, the Fort Worth Convention Center would be built right in the middle of where it all happened. A few years later, the popular water gardens would also be built here, an attraction that is part marvel for those who see it and part symbolism for those who know the history of this place and the efforts to keep it clean. If we look at it, we see water kind of washing things away everywhere you look. So, I mean, I think that there was probably a conscious effort to erase some of that history. To date, a few plaques around the area commemorate the stories of the acre. There's also the Wild Bunch Inlay Monument featuring Butch Cassidy's outlaw gang next to the Flatiron Building. But aside from some markers, the real stories of the acre live on through walking tours and research by historians who just can't get enough of it. For bad... There are definite um, depressing aspects to studying this. Or for good... There is a real hunger for people to connect with the, the deeper history of a place. In a way, again, it's how, at the end of the day, we know ourselves. The appeal is magic. An interesting little fact for you, TCU was almost built one street over from where the acre sat, but when the founding Clark brothers realized what was going on over there, they decided to head to the city's south side instead. You can catch a full, comprehensive look at all of these stories that we have put together for you, streaming right now on CBS and Dallas-Fort Worth. Good history lesson for us all. Ken, thank you.